Ni hao, and welcome to the JD Finance Conference. I'm sorry I can't be here in person, but at least I can be here in spirit, thanks to the wonders of technology. And I want to talk to you today about the greatest revolution of the 21st century, which is likely to be not just the greatest revolution ever in human history, but actually the greatest revolution since the very beginning of life. For four billion years, all of life was controlled by the principles of natural selection and by the laws of organic biochemistry. It doesn't matter if you were a dinosaur or an amoeba or a homo sapiens or a tomato. You evolved by natural selection and you were made of organic compounds. Now, science is ushering a completely new era, the era of artificial intelligence, in which natural selection will be replaced by intelligent design as the principal force in the evolution of life. And life will break out of the limited sphere of organic biochemistry and we will see the creation of the first inorganic life forms after four billion years of evolution. This revolution will have tremendous implications, really on a cosmic scale. One implication is that after four billion years, during which life was confined to planet Earth, for the first time, it will be able to break out of this planet and start spreading in the galaxy and in the universe. But the artificial intelligence revolution will have um, far quicker implications, not just to the galaxy, but to our society, to our economy, to our culture. One very important consequence, which we will see in the coming decades, which we actually already see today, is a shift in authority from humans to algorithms. More and more decisions, which in the past were the monopoly of human beings, we made those decisions, will be made by computers and by big data algorithms. The basic insight or the, the basic shift is that once you have enough biometric data and enough computing power, an external algorithm can understand me better than I understand myself. An external algorithm that has a lot of data about me and a lot of computing power can understand my desires, my emotions, my thoughts, my decisions, can control and manipulate me to a large extent. It starts with very simple things, very simple decisions in life, like what book to buy, Previously, if you wanted to buy a book, you relied on your own feelings and maybe on the recommendations of friends and family members who knew you and knew your taste. But increasingly, this simple decision of what book to buy and read will be taken on my behalf by computer algorithm, like the Amazon algorithm. And the more we rely on the algorithms that know us to make decisions for us, we will lose the ability to make decisions for ourselves. Because the ability to make such decisions is it's, it's use it or lose it. If you don't exercise this ability, it's like a muscle. It gets, it, you, you lose it. It's already happening today with the ability to navigate space. Previously, if you need to go from here to the train station, you need to rely on your own knowledge, your own experience. But now you increasingly rely on your smartphone to tell you where to go. And very soon, you just lose the ability to find your way around space. So one important impact of the AI revolution will be that authority will shift from humans to algorithms. Another important influence will be that AI will completely change the economy, and especially the job market. 
As AI outperforms humans in more and more tasks, it will push humans out of more and more jobs, and we might see the creation of an immense new global class, a useless class, a class of people with, that cannot do anything better than an AI. Uh, professions, for example, like driving vehicles. Five or ten years ago, it seems science fiction to think that a computer could drive a car better than a human being. But today, most experts in the industry assume it's just a matter of time, maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years, maybe 30 years, until computers and self-driving cars push human drivers out of the job market and replace millions of taxi drivers and bus drivers and truck drivers. The advantages of an AI driver, of a, of a human driver, are potentially at least immense. So it makes a lot of sense to replace human drivers uh, with AI drivers. And for similar reason, it will make a lot of sense to replace even human doctors with AI doctors. And this will be accompanied by a huge shift in economic and political power from the vast majority of people to a very small elite that controls and owns the algorithms, the computers, the networks. The same thing may even happen in the world of finance. In order to make wise and efficient financial decisions, speed is often very important and the ability to analyze a large amount of information. AI can process information much faster and more efficiently than any human beings. Another important advantage of AI when it comes to making financial decisions is that AI has no emotions and no body. When humans make financial decisions about millions, millions of dollars or millions of yens or, or euros, they often make terrible mistakes because they are tired, because they are not focused, because they are angry about something, because they are depressed. And AI will never make such mistakes. It has no body, so it's never hungry or tired. And AI will never be angry or depressed because it has no mind, it has no emotions. It will always make the decision according to the data it sees, not according to a momentary emotion. So it's very likely that in the coming decades, more and more financial decisions will be taken by an AI rather than by humans, and that the competition in the financial market will be between algorithms and not between people. In fact, as this process accelerates, we may reach a point, even within our lifetime, when the financial markets managed by AI Things are happening so fast on such a large scale that no human being is able to understand the financial market anymore. In 50 years, maybe no human being will be able to understand the financial system. Only AI will have the capacity to process so much data so quickly to make sense of our financial world. The end result of these processes in the job market is that we may see uh, the rise of a new class, the useless class. Just as the, in the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution created a new class, the urban proletariat, the working class, and maybe the, one of the biggest economic and social and political questions of the 21st century will be what to do with these hundreds of millions of useless people. Useless, of course, not from the viewpoint of their parents or friends or children, but useless from the viewpoint of the economic and political system. Of course, new kinds of jobs are likely to appear. As old jobs disappear in driving cars, 
in uh, manufacturing shirts, even in medicine or finance, new jobs are very likely to, to appear, to be created. But we cannot be sure that enough new jobs will be created. And in addition, there are two very big obstacles uh, that might prevent all these new jobs from solving the problem of the useless class. First of all, in, or even if there are new jobs for humans, people will need very high skills in order to work in these new jobs. Most experts estimate that routine jobs, like producing a shirt or driving a taxi, this will be taken over by robots and computers. The new jobs will require things like creativity, ingenuity, flexibility, and most people just don't have the necessary education and training in order to fulfill these new jobs. So you will have millions of taxi drivers or textile workers without a job, and new jobs, for example, in software engineering. What makes it worse is that the AI revolution will not be a single watershed event the AI revolution will be a cascade of bigger and bigger revolutions. So whatever new jobs appear, within 10 or 20 years, these new jobs too are likely to disappear, to be taken over by a better version, by a new generation of computers and algorithms. The very idea of having a job for life or a profession for life will become obsolete. This is not a problem that we can delay for 20 or 30 years. It's not like we can tell ourselves, okay, the AI revolution will be in, in, in 2040 or 2050. We'll worry about it when it happens. We need to worry about it today because the big question today is what to teach children in schools in 2017 what to teach students in college or university in 2017 so that they will have a job, that they will have the necessary skills in 2040. If we wait until 2040, it's too late. Most of what they'll learn in school or college will be irrelevant by that time. And the big problem is that we just don't know what the job market or the economic situation will be like in 2040 or 2050. Nobody knows. Uh, for the first time in history, we don't know how the world is going to look like in 20 or 30 or 40 years. So we have no idea what to teach our children. The best bet is to teach children mental flexibility and mental balance. The only thing we know for sure about the world of 2050 is that it will be a very different world from today and that it will be a very hectic world characterized by constant change. So whatever the situation will be, people will need a lot of mental balance and mental flexibility to deal with all these changes. One final comment uh, before we part. It should be very clear that technology is not deterministic. It never was. Technology always opens a broad spectrum of possibilities before us, but it doesn't determine which possibility we choose to realize. Artificial intelligence is definitely going to completely change our life, our society, our economy, our political system. But in what way? There are many different ways, and we still have some measure of choice what to do with these new technologies. If some of the possibilities that I've outlined here scares you, you can still do something about it. Thank you.